Hey, there's this perch. And doing a quick little review of uh, Sean Gordon Murphy's uh, White Knight. So, um, well, actually, no. no. This isn't a review of the book. Um, I, I should do a proper review, kind of go through the pages and actually do a, a review of, of the series. More analysis of the event itself. Um, event's the wrong word. But the, the, the series, what he did. And kind of what it means and, and how you can capitalize on it. So, Getting the basics out of the way, I mean, uh, Sean Gordon Murphy wrote and drew uh, a series called White Knight, which was, for lack of a better way, word, it was kind of an Elseworlds, even though DC isn't doing that anymore, kind of an Elseworlds version of Batman. And the concept was basically uh, Batman had become more and more brutal in his tactics and techniques to the point that he was becoming at odds with uh, his old partners and, and sidekicks. Uh, as well as the police. Um, meanwhile, the Joker uh, became sane, uh, became, uh, you know, lost his, his insanity and wanted to kind of prove to the world that, that uh, or prove to Gotham anyway, and prove to Batman that his, his tactics had grown too brutal and he was causing more harm than good and there was a better way to do, to do justice. But the Joker was a, you know, a constantly shifting, um, was going to go bad, was going to uh, start to lose his mind. Also did some interesting stuff with Harley Quinn. I think the, the best, you know, Batman White Knight gets a lot of praise for the portrayal of Batman and for the creator himself. And we'll get to, we'll get to him in a minute. But, uh, you know, for being a unique story, it gets a lot of constant praise. But one area I don't see people praising it for that I, in my mind, was the best or one of the best aspects of, of White Knight was how Harley Quinn was was treated and handled. And the fact that you had kind of two two versions, two Harley Quinns running around, one that was good and one that was bad uh, or one that was trying to do good, one that was uh, kind of bent around the, the, the hedge. Um, I thought that dynamic was the, the star of the book or at least a a big big star uh, of the whole story. And I think that, uh, that, that part doesn't get, it just, we don't talk about that part very much, but it's, it's really, uh, not only a really interesting, really complex dynamic that plays out well, easy to understand, but it also, um, in a, in a crazy way for people who are kind of continuity nuts or read a lot of the books, it helps, um, in this, this very odd way, it helps reconcile in your mind, the kind of different versions of Harley Quinn we've gotten with the more kind of anti-hero version versus a straight up villain, kind of the different aspects of that character um, in a really kind of clever way that I really, I really liked. I thought that was handled well. Anyway, enough about that. Um, I mentioned, so the other big reason it's praised, as I said, is, is Sean Gordon Murphy himself. And Sean Gordon Murphy is a, uh, what I would call the uh, template of how to use social media to market yourself and your profile and your book. And um, Murphy, uh, you know, works very hard, doesn't always, but works very hard to stay completely outside of the general drama and nonsense and, and kind of chaos that uh, so many people get themselves into. He keeps his focus to his work and his book and his tweets and posts and everything else seem very thoughtful, very purposeful, like he's, he's steering in a direction. And then he'll make uh, he'll make nice with people who say nice things. So people praise him, or people do a review. Um, people even do a review that's mixed or negative. And uh, Sean Gordon Murphy will thank people for the review, and it kind of puts that effort out. And he's also been one of the you know complete master at dodging what I would call the the, the trolls who want to dictate what people say. So if somebody who is a I don't know. Let's say a you know YouTube uh, video personality who is uh, very very critical about the comics and certain ideologies. Uh, not mentioning names, and, and I'm not I'm not mentioning names to be coy. I'm, I'm trying to use just a generic example here. But um, if if somebody like that praises Murphy and says, "Hey, you, uh, I really like this book. Thank you. You know, great great work." And Murphy says, thank you for the review. I appreciate that. Keeps it, keeps it basic. Then people will flood in. These, these Twitter trolls will come in and, and kind of warn Murphy. You can't thank that guy. That guy's a bad guy. You got you to gotta shun him. You should be blocking him like the rest of us. And if you thank him, that means you're, 
you're a Nazi sympathizer and any of that kind of that kind of nonsense. And Murphy is the template that everyone should emulate of going, nope, I am not getting into the person's ideology. They said something nice about my book. I'm being gracious and saying thank you, the end. And then he just kills the conversation and people still come at him with their little rumblings like, oh, I don't know, I think you must be, if you're thanking them, you must be a secret Nazi. And they'll, they'll come at him and cut him at him and he just, he does the right thing. He ignores all of that crap and he just stays on message. And the message is, you know, I'm going to thank people. And he thanks all kinds of people. He thanks the the most diehard Democrat and the most diehard Republican in the exact same way. And that's the that's the template for, for for surviving social media, but more importantly, promoting yourself. So I'll, I'll I'll take a you know slight detour here, and give this plea out to creators. Hey, you're in an industry that even if you're at the top of the game, even if you are a Scott Snyder, uh, Jason Aaron, you, you know level writer, or you're a you know a, a top tier artist, take a look at some of the top tier artists of yesteryear of the '90s. Some of them are, are, you know, they've got money and they're doing okay, but they're not doing great. They're not the top of their game anymore because tastes change and opinions change and lots of things change. Well, guess what? Think about your wall and your career. The best thing you can do is keep the focus on your book, promote what you're doing, be gracious to everyone who compliments your book. When people come at you harassing you or they want, they're trying to get you pulled into a war, like some people do this with Murphy and this is the other smart thing. So people on the other side will come at him and say things like, hey, I, I see you're thinking, you know, this YouTube guy. Well, therefore, you must be on our side. So you hate all the SJWs, right? And Murphy's like, nope, not getting into that. Nope, just saying thank you. That's it. And he just, just I'm not going to get pulled into it. And as a result, his record, other than there are some fans who grumble about him on a regular basis, and there are some pros who grumble about him because he's being successful without the crutches and the support and the infrastructure of the network that helps him keep his job. He's shown that he can write. He's shown that he can draw. He's shown that he can pull in numbers and he's a valuable, viable property. And that is power. That's power that doesn't rely on other people. So for anyone who's working within a network, uh, that's dangerous. That's somebody who is showing, I don't need you to evolve my career and make money. Now, at the same time, Murphy is doing a great job of not poking those networks. He's not looking for a fight. So when somebody from, you know, this network or that network uh, comes at him or, you know, tries to pick a fight or, or, or ask for help, Murphy's like, yeah, I'm not getting involved in this, this nonsense over here, but I will help you. Sure. I've watched him help many a creator all across the board with various things. He's just friendly. And I think he said once in a tweet, he'll, you know, he's like, I'll buy you a beer. If I see you, I'll buy you a beer. And uh, I, I haven't, I'll buy, I'll buy Murphy a beer, but um, I, I'd like, but I'll take a beer if he wants to buy, we could trade beer. I'll, I'll drink two beers. That's better than one beer. Um, anyway, I think that is the, the success story here. Of, um, you just don't get involved. You help and be gracious to the networks and, and you, you keep your head above it. It's how you evolve your career. And I think if you're an up and coming artist, you're, hey, you have some talent, you have some skill, you know, be, be prolific on Twitter with your work, show sketches in progress, say, I'm really excited about something's coming out. It doesn't take much work and you get a very loyal, very happy following of people who are going, ah, finally, you know, I, I, I watched actually a couple um, videos from, you know, opposing sides, if you will, of this culture war. And they always talk about there's the weirdos, that's the other side, and there's the normies, that's that's them. And and they all use the same words, normies and weirdos. Okay. Except the normies are neither of those groups. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, the normies are the people who just want to read an effing comic book. Those are the normies. The people who are who are really on their ideologies are are you know pushing an agenda, pushing you know their point of view. And I'm not even saying their point of view is wrong. I'm just saying they, they're doing business outside of comics. They're, they're pushing an agenda. The normies, and they, it's just like in politics. You have the people on the far right, you have the people on the far left, and then you have the middle. And the middle are the normies. They're the people who are just like, I'd like somebody competent and sane in the White House. That would be my pick, you know, who's not going to be a lunatic. And the same thing is true of comic readers. The normies are the people going, um, I'm here to read a comic. <laughs> I'm here to, 
you know, God, I'm spending five dollars on this comic. I want this comic to be good. That's that's their perspective. So why, back to White Knight. Um, you know, where does it go from here? So, uh, so it, it, they're doing obviously uh, Sean Gordon Murphy's doing a sequel to it, or I think as he puts in a better way to say it, you know, continuing the universe. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, it, well, I think DC has to do a couple things, and I think this this needs to happen relatively soon is DC needs to kind of decide how they're going to label these Elseworld stories. Are they going to say this is the Murphyverse? Are they going to, you know, how they want to brand it and move it going forward? Because Murphy, by all signs, seems to uh, believe that he can, he's going to do four or five, you know, who knows how many sequels to this. And if they sell as well as the first one, DC is going to be more than happy to have him just keep doing this until the end of time. So I think they, they need this is something DC needs to solve. And as you've got kind of different uh, stories going on, you've got um, an increasing amount of complexity. If uh, the, the end result of Tom King's run does coincide with, as he says, a generational level change of Batman, which I, I believe is that the marriage to Catwoman will happen and then you'll have a married Batman, which would be a, you know, a big change. Um, if, if that all comes to pass, then how is that going to play off of, you know, is Snyder going to pick it up for his Justice League work? Is, uh, you know, is Jeff Johns going to work that into before Watchmen when the final issue finally ships in 2023? I mean, what, how is this all, you know, what, what universes are we playing in? Um, they, you know, you don't have to be you know, really descriptive about it. It just, it would help a little bit if we got a, you know, a basic... Here's what's uh, here's where White Knight fits, and here's kind of how you should think about it going forward. I think that would be very helpful, um, and I think I think required. I think this is something that if uh, if it does continue with all the different stories going on, they're going to have to kind of make some level of statement about where it all fits. You know, is this Universe 39 or what what's going on? Not a big deal. I, I mean, most people are just going to buy the story and enjoy it. Uh, but you know, it's White Knight is one of those success stories that. I think definitely outperformed what DC thought was going to happen. Um, it's been a, I mean, enough so it's launched its own little kind of mini franchise. Um, I think that has a lot to do with kind of the really dynamic art style of Murphy, which is hitting at the right time, you know, right place, right time. He's, uh, his, his style is unique and quality. And I think that, uh, you know, is again, the personality of the, the creator is, means a lot. And it's a compelling hook. It's a good story. And if you're if he's able to tweak these different characters like Azriel and and others, then he's got many many volumes of uh, stories to write. And I think that's good. And and if you're DC, I think I hope somewhere at the top, people are looking at these different properties, these things like a portfolio, and they're saying, okay, I spread out on the table these different versions of Batman. As long as I market them and categorize them well. Then I'm living a perfect world. I've got a you know a Tom King version. I've got a detective version with some rotating writers for people who like a more maybe more classic Batman that isn't caught up in a big long storyline. I've got the uh, the Murphy verse over here with this style of Batman. I've got Jeff Johns doing the Three Jokers or you know his version of Batman. I've got all these different kind of stories um, that I play in my portfolio that can appeal to many different audiences. And if you're DC, your goal is not to get you know, a reader to buy all of them. Your goal is to get a lot of readers buying, buying at least one of them. So you have a nice, big, diversified audience buying a nice, wide, diversified line of titles. That's that's the goal. So anyway, that's that's kind of my analysis of White Knight. I'll do an actual review uh, because I really did enjoy the title. A lot of people did. And I think, like I mentioned about Harley Quinn, there's a lot of pretty cool stuff in there that uh, flies under the radar that, that makes you feel good that you really like and reading the story, but isn't like totally obvious. Uh, but it's it's some nice stuff. Uh, what do you think? Hey, leave me a comment. What do you think of everything I've just said? Would love to get your thoughts and your opinions. Uh, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, notify, tell friends. We're trying to grow this channel to 200. We're trying to grow it to 200 people. So that's, that's great. Um, thanks for listening and talk to you soon.